This podcast is proud to be part of the Talk Sport Fan Network. Talk Sport. Powered by fans. Massive good evening uh, to everyone this evening. It is extra time fan phone in. I've got a slightly different background to what I've normally got. It's because I'm over at the mother-in-law's uh, today with sensational Stam Emma's mom. Um, to wish them, of course, a very happy uh, Mother's Day. Um, it's a bit of a, a difficult day for me in a lot of ways today uh, with the loss of my own mom. Um, I'm just going to put her on the screen there. Mom, I love you lots. I miss you very, very much. I'm very proud to be your son. And, um, you know, we all miss you very, very much. But I just wanted just to, to say lots of love to all the moms out there. And for those that have lost their moms, I know how you're feeling today. It's been a difficult day, but I know she'd be very, very proud of me. So, uh, Mom, I love you lots. Uh, we have got an absolutely fantastic show lined up for you tonight. Um, and I do want to say a big thank you, of course, as always, to the fantastic people at Creation Wolf who uh, deliver uh, and help power extra time. And um, it's much appreciated uh, for their support. And there's lots of news coming with them over the next uh, few weeks and months. Uh, the link to them, if you've got a business, is creationwolf.com. If you've got a business, honestly, you need to work with them because they are, they'll get your business to the top of everything because they're that good. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for them. Tonight, we've got some fantastic guests. We have got a star-studded lineup of Wolves fans and guests. And if you do want to get on the show yourself, let me know and we'll put the link in the chat and you can come on as well. We're just getting loads of people in the chat um, already saying, well, Harry Williams Productions, I do appreciate your love and thoughts, Chaotic Ranger. Um, it much, it's much appreciated. Um, but as I say, it is Happy Mother's Day to everyone out there and uh, lots of love. So we've got a great show. We're going to be talking about, of course, the weekend's action. Wolverhampton Wanderers 2, uh, the Cottages of Fulham uh, 1. Um, it's not the whole story, of course. Two injuries, four out of our front five starting lineup are now injured. And only Wolves can have this happen to us ahead of a very winnable FA Cup quarterfinal against uh, Coventry City next week. So we will be looking forward uh, to that as well. So first of all, I'm delighted to, to, to welcome back Jack, who is the voice of reason. Um, Jack, good evening to you, sir. Evening, Dave. How are you? I'm good. And how is your own health? Yeah, up, up and down, as, as it always is in winter, I think, like the Coughs and colds come round, don't they? And it, that affects people like myself who suffer with sort of Crohn's and things. But as a touch wood at the minute, I'm I'm fit and fit and well, so I'm fit and firing. So uh, yeah, all good. Fit and firing, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. We've also got the golden girl herself is back. If you can turn your thing round a little bit, Ooh. Lucy. There we go. That's we can get more <laughs> of you on the screen. How are I don't you? Want that. How are you? You've got a golden smile as always. Oh, it's there. It's it's there. As soon as there's a win, it, it... <laughs> it always comes out. You're a bit like Derek and my dad, who does his previews, that his little cuddly dog that he has. Um, I he love only, Derek. Uh, when, yeah, he only comes out when he wins. When he's uh, when he's when he's lost, he's off the vets and everything. But we've, we've got a smile. You're back. Um, looking forward to next week. I am. I am. I'm really looking forward to it. A bit nervous actually, but. Yeah, I think we're all nervous. And do you know why yeah. I think we're nervous? Because it's such a, a massive opportunity. It's just so wolves to mess it up. Um yeah. and I say mess it up, we yeah, yeah, you know, we're in a good shape. We've been playing well, but then we've got all these injuries that are happening. And it's just like we're cursed. It feels like we're cursed, but we're gonna get stuck into that. Before I bring on my next two guests, I do want to just put a little something on the screen. Um Fantastic app, Sofa Score. Um, it's the world's fastest live score app. There's loads of like in depth analysis, live in stuff games. It's free to download. The QR code's on the screen. I know lots of you are using it. You don't even have to register or sign into it. Uh, you don't have to put any money in it. It's completely free. The link's in the description below. 
Um, you've got lots of in-depth, deep dive analytics on players, stats, heat maps, everything at your fingertips. And uh, Chelsea, um, who did the watch along for us, uh, if some of you saw that, Chelsea used it uh, to very good effect during the watch along. And I know lots of you have been demanding that we get Chelsea back on doing the watch along. I'm pleased to announce she will be back for the FA Cup quarter-final against Coventry. Um, so, uh, you, you, you know, she's listened to the demand and she'll be back. But, yeah, download the app. Uh, let me know if you have. Our next guest, it's the Lord himself. Let me just take this off because we don't want to lose. Where am I? Where am I? <laughs> there really you go, mate. Really You're am. hiding in the corner. Now, Jason has got, <laughs> uh, has got a wide-angled lens on his thing. He I, don't know, I don't know what's happened tonight. That's you just want to show up. You just want to show off how big your house is, don't you? No, no, no. I don't know. I was saying I was messing with the camera. I don't know why it's gone really wide, but it, but I'm not really this fat. Everyone, I'm really thin. <laughs> now you've got a nice little, uh, a nice little top. Can tell everyone about who's who's, who's listening to it on the podcast. What what uh, what shirt you're wearing tonight? Oh, I like this one. Um... Obviously, Adidas one, the Man Bet one. Oh, I, I quite like this when it came out, and I was, I think, we was all excited when we got Adidas, wasn't we? Because we thought, yeah. oh, the lazy wear and that. So, uh, yeah, really pleased with this, and uh, yeah, thanks, Dave. In either way, Adrian, ladies, right? Adrian, Adrian me Richards, me and you falling out, Adrian. <laughs> he, he says you need a wide lens. Uh, Neil's gone. Oh no, not Jason Guy. <laughs> Who's oh, that? Was... Oh yeah, uh, another one of my fans. Welcome, Neil. Uh, that Neil, by the way, Sofa Score does open on uh, on on and on uh, Apple Play Store and on can Apple Store say, and also on the Google Play Store. I know for because I'm on Apple myself. So can I just say, people like Neil who go, "Oh, not Jason guy, not this, not that." Listen, this isn't my platform; it's everyone's platform. He can come on and you know say what he wants, make his opinion known. He doesn't need to sit behind his keyboard and. Put crap on. I think anyway, I think he was probably being a bit tongue in cheek, but Neil, you are well. Yeah, look, he says you is your top fan. Flippy neck. He's definitely lying now. Then <laughs> uh, come anyone on, that wants answer. to come on, anyone that wants to come on, Absolutely. just uh, we, we 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 can drop a link in the description, and you want to come on. Kate's a brand new member, so welcome for joining, Kate. Uh, Paul Harris. Now I just want to say, right? I just want to say, I just want to say about this because we have got we have got another fine dignitary coming on, but we have to say for the, the next one to last. But I have to say, Paul the Harris, right? Paul, sometimes me and him haven't seen eye to eye on things, but I met him yesterday. Paul, uh, he he came over to uh, where we were doing the fan reaction. Uh, and I didn't know, but he was in a wheelchair and he came over. We had a hug. We hugged it out. It was lovely to see him. Um, you know, we have some banter and some disagreements. That's what, what it's all about. Well, we don't mind banter and disagreements here on the channel because football is a game of opinions. You're not all going to agree or anything else like that about different things. You can have different opinions, but long as it's respectful and like you can hug it out at the end. That's the uh, that's the, the the main thing that ma that matters. So, uh, Paul, it was uh, it was really great to meet you. Chris on Frizz is on, by the way. He's basically Chris has obviously lost his members account again because he's uh, he's on on his other account. But he says you're a glory hunter, Jason. Well, uh, if I was a glory hunter, the last club on this planet would be uh, War Rant and Wonders Who I Choose, isn't it? Really. <laughs> Um, Adrian's having another go. He, he says you're in you're in cinema scope. Plenty of excitement, tension, and hope, like a western. Although there's the Absolutely. odd that blows through. Well, when I start speaking, that's normally what happens. <laughs> well, our final guest tonight. Um, we have to have we have to have him because listen, I know I try and rotate it round, but um, and he was on the he's was, he was actually on the reaction yesterday as well. But we have to have a little bit of continuity from his week to week, and he's very passionate about the FA Cup. But so, so I can't believe he's on after he's done this walk. What walk? I'm joking, Dave. Come on, Dave. Oh, he, he, he was on last week. <laughs> it was that you're on about money. He was on like, yeah, yeah, come on, he's, Dave. Still too, he's still too worn out. But no, we've got we've got Sooty. We've got Sooty. Good evening, uh, people. 
Sutty, <laughs> you know, is very, very passionate about winning the FA Cup, ain't you, mate? I, bet I am, David. If we win the FA Cup, I will die a very happy man. I hope it's not too soon, but <laughs> that'll cap it all off for me, Dave. <laughs> It blooming well, will mate. I mean, you know, he's now he's now known as Super Sooty because he's been on the uh, he's been on the uh, the fan reaction. Super Sooty, uh, mate, you're wearing. Just describe because there are people that listen to us on the podcast that can't see the screen. But if you would describe your uh, your outfit for tonight, because you've always got these uh, nice trackies. Uh, it's an Elise uh, tennis tracksuit top, Dave, which I will never wear to Wolves. Because if you remember when England lost uh, to France in the um, quarterfinals of the World Cup in Qatar, yeah. if you look closely, you will see me directly behind the goal when Harry Kane missed the penalty with this top on, Dave. So it's unlucky, this top. So hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, Sutty. So you're telling me that the second penalty which Harry Kane needed to score to equalise against France. If he scores that penalty, I'm sure we go on and win the game and go to the final. Yeah. He missed it because you wore that top and bedazzled him. <laughs> Must be, Dave. But what I will blame as well for, Dave, I got my photo took before kickoff by a steward on my phone and I was stood right behind the goal. And obviously you got all the uh, England flags and that. Uh, mine was on the central uh, tier uh, with Worcester Wolves on it. And he said, is that good enough? And it was a great picture of me, but I was stood directly above a West Brom, England. Uh, so I said, no, I'll move along a little bit. I'll go. <laughs> good, man. Hey, mate, so I... have you got that photo? Because if you can WhatsApp it me, I can get it up on the screen a bit later in the show. I have somewhere. I'll send it your day. If you send it to me, because... Uh, Guys, in the chat, we've got over 300 of you watching live, which is crazy. 300 watching live. Hands up if you want to see that photo of Sooty um, in, the, in, the, in the stadium for the semi-final. And, uh, quarter if final. We, in the quarter-final. Smash that yeah, like button. Jason has got his hand up in widescreen. We can see, definitely. <laughs> Lucy's got her screen. hand up. I've got my hand up as well. <laughs> Um, everyone's putting their hand up and if Sooty sends that across to me later on in the show, if you wait towards the end of the show, I promise you, if I can get that and I can get it uh, turned into a PDF because I have to have a PDF to put it, I'll, I'll sort that out. We're getting, look, oh look, all going yes, definitely, all got their hands up. We will get that photo up on the screen of Sooty. And Sooty, okay. yeah. go on mate. I was going to say, I'm not a techie person. Can I do that without coming off this, Dave? Because it's yes. on this. You can WhatsApp it without coming off this. Okay. You just go onto your WhatsApp, send the send the picture in between chats, and I'll do the rest. Because no I've co I've come off WhatsApp on notifications, so people can't ring me while I'm on this. Yeah, you just open your app up, send the yeah. picture. And you'll be good and be, be good. Yeah, uh, Kate is a new member, by the way. Um, she's sending love from Key West in Florida. Uh, right. let us all know where where in the world you're watching from. And let's get stuck in. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll do Key West there. I'll put some of them on the screen. Right, Jason, we've not had you on for a while. So um, as you're in technical or widescreen, talk us through. <laughs> Talk us through um, how you're feeling after yesterday's game, mate. Well, over the moon, I think, um, obviously, being in the, the top half of the table, um, it creates its own set of pressures and expectations. But I've got to say, Dave, you know, we delivered yesterday. And, and Fulham are a good side. You know, they're well organised. And it could easily be a banana skin, especially Fulham at home. You know, I'm sure we'd probably fancy... Liverpool or Spurs at home, wouldn't we? But we probably wouldn't want to play Fulham at this time of the season. But like yeah. I said, I thought it was a polished performance um, in parts. When we started with four at the back, I was very concerned, you know, because I do think we look a better side with five at the back. I certainly think we look a better side with Dawson in the team. So when we started with four at the back, I was a little bit concerned. But like I said, I think everyone had a, had a good game. And I want to single out Nathan Fraser as well, because... 
it's hard for him at the minute. He's been chucked into this. You know, he's, he's leading that line on his own. He's a young lad. But Dave, he made some really, really good runs. You know, he really did. His, his positional play, I thought, was excellent. Um, I think, you know, we're all willing him to score. And I think he's definitely got it in him. And like I said before, I'd rather I'd rather see Fraser up front than than Selba. Um, with 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 the midfield as well, Dave I thought the midfield was very strong. Gomez and Lamina both had great games, and they have been invaluable this season. They really, really have. So although it was a bit shaky, at the say shaky. Although the the um, the back line it, it changed somewhat, um, and you know. Playing in a back four when they're not doing it week in, week out can sometimes be quite difficult to transition to. Do you know what, Dave? I, I thought they did very well. Obviously, the worrying thing is, is as we're going to discuss, the injuries and also the, the, the striker situation because it's a lot of pressure for Nathan Fraser at the minute. You know, and he, he's, he's listen, if all if all strikers are fit, he's not going to own Hill's first choice, is he? So it's a bit difficult. He's been chucked in at the deep end, but I think he's he's done well. Absolutely. And guys, if you want to join in the chat, um, all you need to do is hit that subscribe button and you can join in the chat and ask questions as well. Um, it's going to be a really good one tonight. As I say, lots to, lots to talk about, and lots to, to look forward to. Jason, uh, you make some absolutely fantastic points as always. It's uh, it's great to have you uh, back on. And we also have a little bit of update from Jason a little bit later in this chat about his little fundraiser that he's got going at the moment. So uh, he's had something done. Um, which uh, which we're going to have to get him to show us as well. Jack, you're smiling, uh, mate. Uh, the game yesterday, um, I, I, it was bittersweet for me, that game yesterday. Was it bittersweet for you? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I, I think I think a lot of people could be forgiven for kind of having one eye on next Saturday, couldn't they? I mean, yesterday was kind of felt like a bit of sort of a prequel to, to the Coventry game. Taking us in away from from Fulham there, like Jason said, very good side. And I think first half you saw that they were very confident. Some lovely flicks and one twos that kind of cut us open a little bit. Not many teams have done that this season. Man City struggled to cut us open when they came to Molyneux, but Fulham did it quite well first half. And we hung in and Saar made some big saves. Um, second half we were much better. Changed the shape slightly. Got players higher up the pitch. Noticeably, Lamina started to press their centre backs and their back full backs, and we got a lot more joy. Um, and then from there, it was, the first goal was always going to be important. We got it and we got the second goal sort of 10, 15 minutes later. Controlled it, saw it out reasonably well. A couple of, sort of dodgy moments. I think in terms of the injuries, I think that's the, the big worry at the minute. But I, I love the mentality of this group. It's literally, as my friend said to me the other day, next man up. So someone goes injured. Yeah. Guy comes off the bench. It's my turn. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Bellegarde's been playing out of position all season. Tommy Doyle. 10 minutes into the game, he has to come on. You know, he's been sat on the bench, not expecting to come on. Yeah, it's fine. I'll come on and play. You know, Fraser's coming to the team. Yeah, I'll play. I'm only 19, but I'll come and play for you. I'll run around. And, yeah. and, and you know, Santi Bueno again yesterday come in for Dawson. Didn't look out of place, does he? I mean, Uruguay don't do bad centre-halves, do they? So that, that's obviously a real positive. So, yeah, disappointing to lose big players at a really crucial time of the season. But I'm quite confident that the players that are available will do a job for us when they need to. Absolutely, and Lucy, uh, do you sort of concur with uh, with the, with what Jack's had to say there about? Absolutely, the, absolutely, one hundred percent. I've got no, I've got no doubts in um, the team that we can put together with the lads. Um, they all seem up for it. Every single one of them, they, they've got confidence. They don't look as if they're sit, going to sit back and just get on the pitch and do nothing they all go for it um and it's it's great to see absolutely fantastic to see we wouldn't have seen this before we lopetegi or the others we wouldn't have seen that there's something about gary o'neill that's making these players play good football and together as a team and it's just lovely to see really really is as a fan it's it's brilliant Absolutely. You can't. And to be honest, I think, to be honest, um, I had a laugh with Sutty after the game because Sutty, you weren't that confident going into the game, were you? And he, and he basically says, I'm never going to predict us to win again because every time I every time I predict us to lose that we're winning, we've got our private members group 
which if you become a member of the channel, you can get on. Um, but he put a comment in there saying, I'm going to predict us to lose every every game for the rest of the season. <laughs> we're, win- we're getting to the Champions League and we're winning the FA Cup, didn't you, mate? Absolutely, David. Uh, my predictions of everything this year, when I look back, because I do watch these back to see how wrong I've been. And basically, I don't think I'm a very good pundit on here, Dave, because everything I've predicted has been the total opposite. So, um, <laughs> Go on, give us give next... us some examples, Sutty. Let's do a well, rewind. As you know, I'm... I, I still rate Lopetegui greatly. Lopetegui has got a great European pedigree. It of he kept us up. I believe he kept us up with the yeah, signings no of, last, of last January. Now we've had huge uh, discussions about this, and I will. Ne- if he came back with I don't know a West Ham or somebody like that, no way would I boo that man. Without that man, we would be basically. What doing what Leeds and Leicester and that are doing now in the championship, we would have gone down. So let's never forget what he did for us. No, Fast no. forward. Gary O'Neill gets appointed. Oh, my God. What have we done? I'll tell you what we've done, Dave. We've galvanised the whole football club. Players love this man, clearly. They will run through concrete barriers for this man. They will willingly put their own physical health on the line by smashing anything that moves if it's needed. They're good footballers, Dave. They're very good footballers. As I've said to you before, uh, a lot of teams will be looking at Wolves as a club and quite a few of its players and its manager. So this is our this is almost our cop-out season, Dave, where we've done very very well and gone way above anybody's expectations massively above in fact mine yours everybody nobody expected this let's be honest we'd have all taken 16th 17th not a problem we would have taken that but it's where we've got to make sure that we go to the next level this guy is too good to sort of stagnate. I think this man, I I personally believe he up to this point now, he is manager of the season. I know you got your peps and your clocks and all of this. Yeah. They've got shit loads of money, Dave. Sorry, lots of money to spend. We've had nothing, absolutely nothing to spend. This bloke, no preseason, nothing. He's gone in there, and I'm going to use an example here. And Leicester City, uh, the the season before they won the league, they were bottom at Christmas. And Nigel Pearson uh, went on to win something like 13 out of the remaining 16 games. And they finished about halfway, which was what Wolves did under Lopetegui. The following year, the following summer, Pearson gets a sack and they brought Ranieri in. Ranieri went in with very little time. And he said um, to Craig Shakespeare, right, I'm going to come and watch you train. And do you know what he did, Dave? Yeah. Nothing. His actual words were, I didn't have to do anything. They'd won so many games the previous season. There was nothing to change. And I just said, carry on, do what you were doing. They went on to win the league, Dave. They're an unfashionable club that won the league and get every single other club hope. So I think, I don't think this man needs loads of money. What he needs is to be able to pick some players that he wants. And I don't Mm. think he'll spend loads of money, Dave, but he needs to be given a bit to add to what is already an outstanding team when fit. And there lies your problem. There's not enough of them, Dave. Now we're struggling a little bit and they're still running through brick walls for him, but it's, we're paying the price now because we're picking up injuries. And it's that time of the season where we're on the cusp again. Look at the table again. We could still qualify for Europe had we got a little bit of depth, but I'm going to predict we won't qualify for anything, Dave. Go on. Well, is that because, uh, because you want to keep your, your thing going? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Jason, Jason and Jack have been nodding. I, I, I mean, this is a this is certainly something that we need to talk about because um, Gary O'Neill, manager of the season, you say about you say about Klopp and Pep Guardiola. They've had they've got plenty of money to spend and and all of that, but they've had plenty of money to spend over the last three or four years, building their team as well. It's not just this year. It's like they've got, they're already up there. Um, I guess there's an argument for um, Emery at Villa for what he's done. You have to say well played to him. Yeah. Um, and, if, and Rob Edwards is doing a fantastic job over at uh, Luton. And to me, I agree with you. Why should it be someone that wins the league or they're going to give it to Klopp because it's his last season? If Gary O'Neill gets us to an FA Cup final and gets us into Europe, he's surely got to be, from where we were, manager of the season. Um, and you, you have to say Rob Edwards and Unai Emery have got to be in the, the thing. Jason, what are your thoughts? I mean, it was interesting last night on Match of the Day because obviously Gary Lineker made a comment about Europe and it was he actually positively acknowledged that, you know, he, he, he could be on the cards. Um Obviously, they're not looking that far forward, but he, he, he was pleased with Gary Lineker for almost asking the question. He, he sort of thanked him. But do you know what, Dave? I think right at the start of the season, you know, we've, we've spoke about this before, but, you know, we, we were being wrote off. We wrote ourselves off almost, didn't we? Because we didn't have a pre-season effectively. All our hopes were in Lopetegui because, as Sutty quite rightly said, he did an amazing, you know, a, a manager with amazing pedigree, did an amazing job. So none of us really backed Gary O'Neill. And I think, you know, yes, I always... I'm always very positive, as you know, Dave, and, you know, not once, and you can look through all my tweets, I've never slagged the guy off, but inside you're thinking, you know, is this an appointment? We was all expecting almost a bigger name or somebody who got a lot more management experience, but how wrong were we all? Because what an appointment he was. And you know what? You've got to pay credit to Matt Hobbs for that because Matt Hobbs obviously saw something that none of us did, and he has been unbelievable. And it does, I don't want to harp on about, you know, the past, but, it does remind you of the new nowadays, and that's what gives you a bit mm. of an excitement and a bit of a buzz. His fist pumps up to the South Bank and yesterday the North Bank as well. And I just think, he, he, you know, he, like the word, you know, the buzzwords, togetherness and all this, it, it, it's created that. And I think, especially with Large, we, you know, it, it was sort of almost dissipating between the, the, the players and the fans. But right now it's back on track and that's down to Gary O'Neill. And any player he brings in does not look out of place. You know, they, they, they really don't. Whatever formation he picks, they keep continuing to surprise us. At the start of the season, we would never have dreamt we'd have been in the top half, let alone rightfully in the top half. You know, we haven't had a few lucky wins. We haven't had a good run. We have been, you know, bang on for this. So, listen, how far can he take us? And, and so he's quite right. I don't think he's going to want to spend millions and millions and millions of pounds. And that isn't the answer, neither. That isn't the answer. No. He's got the answer... You know, we've got the answer in the manager. Yes, we have got to back him, but it doesn't mean about spending 80, 90, 100. We haven't got that money to spend anyway, but look what he's got out of this group. Well said, absolutely well said. And um, obviously, you, you're quite rightly to, to say, I did a piece and Matt Hobbs came out in the week talking about where we were, the state of the nation, looking ahead to the summer transfer window. Uh, what I like about Matt Hobbs... Um, he's done a great job since he's took over. You know, he, it's all been under his watch, uh, and he he's been straight. He seems to be being straight with the fans yeah. about stuff. Um, I think we all know that in the summer window, you know, Wolves will be through the FFP or Profits and Sustainability. We will probably be around about twenty million clear. But he's also stated that we will probably see some players go, which we expect, but. He's also talked to, about it doesn't necessarily need to be our best player. It could be two or three other players. Yeah. Um, and it will release the funds to um, be able to for Gary to invest in the squad because no doubt Gary O'Neill is going to be looking to strengthen and I think they will back him. It's also good to see that they've come out, uh, which we've talked about on here, about the fact that he does need an improved contract. Because Gary yeah. O'Neill, without a shadow of a doubt, is probably one of the lowest paid managers in the Premier League. He's earned a contract. They do want to keep hold of that. He's, Gary O'Neill's been, been asked about this and being linked with other jobs and talked about as a future England manager. I like the fact that he says, you know, I'm the manager of this club. 
Uh, I love the connection I've got with the fans, the players and the club. He's clearly loving it. Uh, he is, I don't think Gary O'Neill's going to be in a rush to leave Wolves uh, just yet. I think he's still got a lot to prove. And, you know, he would. I think Gary O'Neill is someone that probably also sees I need to be somewhere for two or three years uh, to build a project and show I can build a project. So I don't think he's in his, his interest to, to jump as well. And I think... Yeah, he will be getting people's attention. He is kind of the, uh, it's nice to see what, you know, Wolves and our manager being kind of the media darling that everyone's talking about. It's kind of nice to see him getting that credit and also Wolves getting some credit. And I don't know whether it's because he's the manager that instead of saying like what normally happens when Wolves beat a top team or something like that, oh, they played crap. So that's why Wolves have beat them. They're actually giving Wolves the credit and yeah. Gary O'Neill and his coaching team and the players the credit for actually negating the other teams and being better. And um, the summer window is going to be very in interesting. But as Gary O'Neill has said himself, there's still 10 games to go with the season. They don't want to sit back on, oh, yeah, we're safe on 41 points and 38 <clears throat> points. They still want to be pushing as high as they can. And they still want to go and win the FA Cup. We've got four of our, we, we had two out of our five forwards out injured before the game. Bellegar goes down with a knee. We don't know how long he's going to be out. He was jumping up and down and then walked off. So I don't know how serious that is. And Pedro Neto pulls up with a hamstring straight away in front of the North Bank. He's off. He's out for next week for definite. It's like, that's the one thing with Neto. He keeps getting these hamstring injuries. So he keeps getting, I think it's, I think Jack, is it the is it the other hamstring to the to the, the one he had before? Yeah, it is. I think it's the different one, isn't it? Because someone was saying that the other day, and I think yeah, it's kind of the opposite one, isn't it? But I think sometimes if you've had a hamstring injury, it puts strain on your other leg, doesn't it? As you're recovering, so maybe there's a factor in there. So it, it is. Mm. I mean, I think the issue is, I mean, in the Premier League, it's such an intense league. You could have someone who's hundred percent fit, never misses a game. And they just go and get injured in in a bad tackle, or they just overstretch for a ball. So, it, it, I mean, we we can't moan too much about injuries because compared to some teams, we, we've we've actually managed our squad really well this season. Yeah. I think, like Sutty says, they are running through brick walls, and that does have that impact at this point in the season. You know, so we, we're not in a position where you know we're having to fill the starting eleven with you know under twenty ones, but but we've got a small squad. We've always had a small squad, haven't we? Even ever since we came up under under Nuno, and I think just it 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 does happen sometimes where you lose two or three players and you feel it more because you haven't quite got that depth to kind of plug the and gaps. And it's all in that it's all in that one area of the pitch. Like yeah. you look at the defense and you look at the midfield, and we're like well sorted. It's all in that attacking final third where you need to put the ball in the back of the net, and we have our pace and stuff like that. You know, is it a concern? Obviously, it's a worry. Is it a concern going into next week's game? I mean, of course, you know, what I was quite impressed with, I was feeling a bit down at half time with everything, thinking ahead, oh, God, you know, we've got Coventry next week. Yeah, they're a championship side, but, you know, but they're a, they're a good championship side, having a very good season. You know, they can hurt us and we're going to be missing all our front three and then Bellegar gets injured as well. But second half, again, out of nowhere, and I think Gary O'Neill said it's probably his most satisfying win because despite all of that, we found a way to win and we scored two goals. OK, we we had knocked a few off the line and Saar made a couple of good and it seemed like Troy Ori was definitely wanting to score. Uh, Saar made one brilliant save and, you know, we get it off the line and Fulham were pushing a bit. They got one at the end, which I don't think they knew a lot about, to be honest. It kind of just went... <laughs> They just hit one foot, hit the other foot, went in the back of the net. But we won the game. And it's another three points. We put six points between us and Fulham. You know, we're still in the contention for a top seven, even a top six finish. And the quarterfinals next week, how do you think they're going to be approaching next week's game with the injuries that we've got? What, what What's your sort of solution for that, Jack? Uh, I was saying this to, to my friend earlier. We were chatting about it. I think, like you just said, Coventry. They, I mean, they were a penalty kick away from being in the Premier League this season, weren't they? Last year in, in the chat, they've got some good players. Mm -hmm. I think when you when you're struggling for goals, I think what you do is you say, right, keep a clean sheet, and one goal's enough. 
So I think that's probably what we're going to have to do next week. Like we, when we went to the Hawthorns in, in the previous round and we kept it really tight, we were very, very compact. They had a little bit of possession and pressure, but we managed it really well. And then when we got the opportunity to attack and cause them damage, we managed to do it. And I think it potentially will be a very similar game. I don't think it's going to be a basketball 4-3, 5-4 kind of game. It will be 1-0, 2-1. And I think if we can keep it really tight, so it might be that we go back to the very sort of rigid back three with Totti, Kilman, Dawson maybe. And you might even play three in midfield with Gomez, Lamina and Doyle and just really give them no space at all. And then have Sarabia and Fraser as your two further forward and just hope that, I mean, I think Sarabia is a phenomenal player. I'll be yeah. doing a little bit of, of digging on his stats and it, do you remember when he came on against Tottenham uh, yeah. and, and won us the game? Since then, we've scored 35 goals as a team and he's been on the pitch for 25 of them. So when he's on the pitch, we're far, far more likely to create and score goals. So I think if he's on the pitch next week, we'll get chances. Do you think that's a confidence thing with Sarabia, that goals sort of turned a switch? Uh, potentially, yeah. And, and I, I think you know a lot of players do breed on confidence and that sense of belonging and just feeling like they've got something to offer the team. And and he was in and out at the start, wasn't he? And I think he was very much Lopetegui's man, wasn't he? He'd worked with him in, in the youth levels at Spain and I think he'd had him at Real Madrid as well. So he'd obviously been brought to the club by a particular manager. That manager then leaves and you've got no clue whether the new manager thinks you're a good player, whether he, you fit how he wants to play, whether he thinks someone else in the squad is better. So it does kind of create those in your head of, have I got a future here? And we were even discussing it with Sarabia, weren't we, at the back end of the summer. Is he someone that you look to move on? He's on big wages, obviously, because of coming from PSG. But since he's come into the team, I mean, he's almost undroppable now because of what I was just saying about how many goals we score when he's on the pitch. Mm. Well said. And Lucy, you know, Sarabia, what, what Jack has had to say there, we're going to talk a bit, we're going to I'll come back to the commentary in a minute because we want to finish off uh, on the Fulham. But, like, what are your thoughts on uh, young Nathan Fraser, Lucy? Oh, I've, I've watched him um, from when he was in the under-21s. I used to go to the matches. I followed that lad um, and I always said, we need him. We, we need him. He's got so much passion for the game. And you can see that when he's got the ball, he's got a footballing brain and that's what's needed when you're going forward. He's absolutely fantastic. I, I, I highly rate him and I really, really hope that he gets to play next week. I really, really do. because I, I think he's class when he's got the ball. Absolutely. And you, you say you watched him a bit in the under-21s? Yeah. Yeah. Then you were quite impressed because he's been at Wolves since since, since the under eights, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was he's only just... a couple of years ago that I was starting to go and watch him, and oh god, he's he just he's just immense. Every time we got the ball, the crowd got behind him. He he just bolts. He's and he's goal scoring. I know he hasn't scored many yet in the full team. But for the under twenty ones, the the goals he was scoring were absolutely immense. He was fantastic. So once his confidence gets up even further, because I know he's a confident boy anyway, you can see that when he's got the ball. But when he when it's up even further and people back him and the crowd gets behind him, he's gonna keep going for it. Fantastic, think, just brilliant. Yeah, and so and we're glad we kept him because, like, the, when they were looking for a striker and stuff, he, they were talking about going on loan. He's going to have a big part to play now uh, for the rest of the season, Nathan Fraser. Uh, Jason, you know, Fraser, your thoughts on uh, how he did yesterday? Yeah, I, I think we're all, uh, we're all we're all the same, really, aren't we? There's nothing better than a homegrown striker coming through, you know. I mean, I, and I mentioned this before, I know Robbie Keane was from Ireland, but he was a young lad coming through the youth team. And we've had Adam Proudlock in the past, and there's been loads of others. And there is nothing better is there than than and, and especially as the lads from Wolverhampton, you just want him to do well. And there was a time yesterday, I think it was at the South Bank end, where he got a chance. And the crowd, I mean, the crowd were brilliant yesterday, but they almost seemed to it react was. different. And I think we're all willing him to score. And you know yeah. what? I think the goals will come if he keeps getting opportunities like he's. I think the goals will come. I think he's a, he's a good young player. It's a massive step, obviously, from the under-21s into Premier League football. A huge step. Playing against the best defences in the world. But all that's going to do is make him a better player. 
Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, mate. I, I think he's, uh, he's, he's got, he's certainly got something. I, I do want to get Sutty's view on on Fraser and and also Jack, because Jack's in a minute. Jack's watched a lot of uh, watches a lot of the the youth games as well. Sutty, we're in a position um, where obviously wasn't able to bring in a striker. Fabio's gone out on loan again. Um, Kalajic went out on loans, got injured. We've got four injuries to the uh, out to, to the to the front forwards. Are you confident in this young man Fraser being able to deliver for us? Because on what you've seen so far, because I, I think you had a few reservations. But what 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 are you making of him? The only reservation I've got, Dave, and I think it's an absolute must as a centre forward in the Premier League. Is a lack of pace. He's not very quick. Um, he holds the ball up well. Um, he he's not frightened of a big centre half. That's good. I like to see that. I like to see him get stuck in. Fabio was too soft, too nice. Um, he wasn't the quickest either. Um, but when you you do need an element of pace in this game to get yourself in the positions um, because these centre halves nowadays. 95% of them in the Premier League have got a turn of pace. So you are going to need it. He's a young boy, Dave. If they work on it, it could come. Um, I would play him next week because he's a good focal point, Dave. Um, and he brings he holds the ball up. He brings uh, two wide lads into play. And when he uh, does have a sniff at goal, he's certainly not frightened to have a go. Um, which, you know... I'm all for having a go. It infuriates me when we try and walk the ball in. Um, point, of so fact, what... point of fact, actually, Sutty, uh, talking about shooting, Nelson Tomato's shot. If you hadn't have had a go, it, it wouldn't took the deflection no. and gone in. If you've ever and shot, that... you've got a chance of that happening. And we've been guilty of this for the last few seasons, almost trying to score the perfect goal. Jack, um, you, which... Jason, you've mentioned that a lot, haven't you? Yeah. Walking it in. We, we've tried. Yep. We've tried to score the perfect goal. So, yeah, I would start him next week. I'd also start, Dave, Santiago Bueno. Yes. You're a big fan, aren't you? Yes. Santiago Bueno, Dave. Look at Lucy brightening up. Yes. Lucy, I couldn't put I love Sunday. him. Why, why do you like him so much, Lucy? He's just a young Cody. He, he just doesn't stop. I think he's absolutely fantastic. I really, really rate that lad. Absolutely brilliant. And Sutty, you've mentioned him a few times. You think he's the future of our defence, don't you? I actually do think, Dave, he's the most co composed centre-half we've got. If he uh, carries... I think he's been bedded in this season, Dave. And I think from next season, the natural progression for me is because somebody else is losing a bit of pace. I think you'll see a natural switch around of Dawson on the bench and Santiago Bueno starting every game. And I, I actually think if he carries on as he is, we paid about 12 million quid for him. And I think he will be worth... Well, Josh, Josh Woodbury is saying he's an absolute steal. He, he, he is going to be worth a small fortune if one, he stays fit and... Uh, Two, he keeps progressing like he is. This is a Uruguayan centre half, international as well, that we got for twelve million quid. Now he has to start next week, Dave. He is so composed; he never gets flustered. And if you watch him, he very rarely goes to ground. He wins the ball stood up, and that's the mark of a good defender to me. Don't dive in. Yeah. Don't dive in. Take the ball cleanly. And he never, you watch him yesterday, how many passes out the back did he put astray? And I'll tell no. you. Shall I tell you? Go on. No, none. Fantastic. So, yeah, big fan, Sutty is. Massive. Jack, yeah. I, I'm, and this is before we start talking about, I'll go to you in a minute, Lucy, about player man of the match, performance rating and all of that. But, Jack, you watch a lot of the... I, I mean, Jack does watch a lot of the youth teams from all age groups and stuff like that. You've seen a lot of uh, Nathan Fraser. You've mentioned him here uh, many times. There's a few of the other young lads that are 
you know, getting onto the squad. Do you can you just give us a little bit more insight into Nathan Fraser? And uh, I mean, there's another 15 year old that was on the bench last week, and you know, uh, is it Chiroa? Or uh, if I've got his yeah. name right, <clears throat> give us a little bit for everyone that don't really know these players because you've seen them. Give us a little bit of insight from your from your scouting that you've done of watching them. No yeah, pressure. I, nah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think I think we've kind of covered a lot of, of Nathan's strengths and sort of development points, if you like. I think what I like about Nathan, first and foremost, as a striker, is he loves scoring goals. You know, when he scores for the under twenty ones, he celebrates. Sometimes you see players at youth level and development level they score a goal and they just trot back to the halfway line because it doesn't matter too much at that level. But Fraser loves to go and celebrate. And I think that's a real important thing to say because we've had lots of strikers come through the door in the last few years and, and they're all fantastic technical footballers, but they're not natural goal scorers. And I think that's something that I'd say about Nathan. He's a natural goal scorer. He will find half a yard here and there just to get his shot away, as, as Sutty mentioned. And, and he'll, he'll get ahead of defenders when it really matters. He hasn't got a lot of pace. And I think in under 21 level you can kind of cover that with your physicality i mean i've seen him bully 21 under 21 defenders for fun uh, and he did it under 18 level as well when we got to the youth cup semi final um it'll be different at, at, at senior level and i do think once this season's done and we can hopefully get some bodies in in the summer he'll go out on loan and he'll benefit massively from that but this is a huge opportunity and if you think about our, our motto out of darkness cometh light this is it, isn't it? You know, you've got a, a bit of a, a crisis of injuries, and you're thinking, well, we got who we're going to. All of a sudden, this 19 year old lad from Technol steps forward and says, I'll play, I'll, <laughs> I'll come and do you a job. And he might just get you the goal next week that gets you to Wembley. And, and you right. know, you've mentioned Robbie Keane, and, and he came out of nowhere, didn't he? he? Made his debut at Norwich in 97, 98, and scored. And, and that went on from there, didn't he? And Adam Prowlock came in and scored lots of goals in his first season, didn't quite kick on, but did a job and, and and maybe that's what it is but in terms of, of Fraser I think it's very early to tell I mean the lack of pace might well stop him being a top level centre forward that would be my gut instinct but I think he's got potential to certainly do a job for us in, in the sort of the now and potentially in the future as well and uh, and some of the other <laughs> players that have been on the bench and um, around the team we've got to give a little bit of insight on them as well yeah I mean um Chire was a very good player. I think we had him from Ipswich. I think he, he was their youngest ever senior player. I think he was sort of 16 and a, a couple of days when he so they obviously spotted his talent. I think he turned down a contract there because he thought he saw his opportunity with with us and we kind of got got him on, on a bit of a steal, really. I mean, he's very technical, could play right across the front front positions. Again, physicality at 21 level, you can cover that. At senior level, it's a it's a big, big step up. Um I'm not seeing very much of Noah Lamina or Enzo Gonzalez to, to kind of give you too much. I've seen a little bit of... of Noah's been work. on the bench the last two games as well, hasn't he? Yeah, and I think, again, he's one that they're potentially looking more for sort of the future, really. I think they've they've done the deal now to get him into the building because it was a phenomenal deal at the time, you yeah. know, because of the, the, the circumstances around his, the passing of, of his father. Obviously, they felt that getting him in around Mario would be massively beneficial. And I think, to be fair to PSG, they saw that as, as something that was really good. He was on loan in, in Italy at the time, which, which is no good for him when everything's going on in France and, and, and whatever. So I think they've done done a really good deal. Again, Matt Hobbs, you know, doing the business and, and they've got a really good deal for a potentially a, a big, big player for us in the future. So I think that's one that, that you keep an eye on and, and you monitor for the time being. I mean, Wes do is a really tempting player. I, my, my suspicion would be, and call me cynical. Obviously, he's coming up to the time where he signs professional forms, and there are a lot of clubs looking at him. And we have lost a few recently to to the big teams, and they really don't want to lose him. So I think what they've done is they've said, "I tell you what, look how close you are to the first team at Wolves. You've been on the on the first team bench at fifteen. Sign your pro deal with us, and we'll make sure you have a good career. You go to Arsenal or Liverpool or Tottenham, someone like that. You're going to be miles away from the first team." Yeah. We did exactly the same with, with Chem Campbell a few years ago, if you remember, because I think Bruce and Dortmund were trying to sign him and we put him in the first team. I think Nuno did and went, sign with us because you're really close to the team. Dortmund, you'll be nowhere near. And then it, it kind of happened, didn't it? So that would be my suspicion with that one. But there are some good players coming through and, and it might be that 
ultimately we have to rein in our expectations as a, as, as a fan base that it might be that only one or two make it. But if they do, that saves you an absolute fortune. And the way that profits and sustainability works with the homegrown players as well, it's all profit as well because it, it works a little bit like that. Right, thanks for that, Jack. That's really good insight, and I think it helps everyone that's chatting. We're literally on 487 people watching live, which is great. Um, if you get shy of 500 watching the show absolutely live from around the world, which is uh, very close. Let's see whether we can get that up over 500. If you are watching and enjoying this, please smash a like. Uh, it helps us out on YouTube. And if you are brand new, um, subscribe it. That's the subscribe button for great content. Lucy, right, let's get on to go back onto the game against Fulham. Um, I want to give us your Lemore Windows Man of the Match and your Fox at Shipley performance rating, but of course, also your highlight of the day or moment of the day. And of course, that can be anything from having a burger at half time or a pie to anything that happened in the game. So let's give us your thoughts on that. Um, highlight of the day was seeing Dave for his 75th birthday. My very, very, That's very not me, good by friend. the way. <laughs> not yourself, no. <laughs> I'm a no, long way off my, that. My good friend uh, Dave, um, who has a season ticket next to me, actually. Um, it was his 75th birthday yesterday, so he had a balloon and all his friends bought him um, a top. And that was just lovely. It was great to see him yesterday. So over the moon with that. That's um, a, lovely, um, a real good one. Thanks for that, Lucy. And a happy 75th today. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Um, I'm going to give it a, an eight, I think. Um, first half wasn't wasn't the greatest, but it wasn't bad. I wouldn't I wouldn't put it in into context of God, it was rubbish. I wouldn't want to watch that again. It wasn't it wasn't to that extent um but the second half the way they all pulled together um that's that's how i've come to an eight it, it was just so emotional and the way that the crowd got behind them lamina going come on come on telling everybody come on sing sing as loud as you can and the nelson samado song my boy's got his song i'm happy um, he, he actually that. mentioned that as well so he loved the fact yeah. that he's got a song yeah. Oh God, hearing that, he I've got it. goosebumps thinking about it. I love that boy. I think he's absolutely fantastic. Um, and to see him shine the way he is at the minute, he, he's just brilliant. Um, so I'm going to give it an eight. Oh, man of the match. It's a really hard one this week because they were all absolutely fantastic. As we've said, Santiago Bueno, superb. Um, Samado, superb. Ignore Gomez. I, I'm re, I really, really struggled, but I'm going to give it to my boy. I am. I'm going to give it to Samado because he was fantastic. That goal, what a goal! I mean, I know it came off his the other one players. It don't ball, matter, mate. They, they that all don't count. Matter. If he, he, got, he was there. What I also like was the back heel from Joe Gomez that he uh, yeah. went and rolled it back. I it mean, really absolutely fantastic. But yes, yeah, so you're going to you. You're going with Samado. I am. I am. <laughs> and I've got a comment I've left on the screen here. Steve says, cracking show this evening. Even his missus is up now. Hey. Welcome, Steve's yes, missus. Steve's missus. Give her a shout out. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe, though, Mrs. Steve. Fantastic. <laughs> um, she used one of my it. season tickets yesterday, I think. Oh, did he? She did. Oh, she it's did. Wise. Brilliant. She went. She went for Mother's Day. I'm sure she did as a present. Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's fantastic. Paul Everett's also said, great show. Jason, over to you, mate. Um, same question. Le yeah, Lee Moore Windows, man of the match, Foxy Shipper performance rating. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, right, uh, performance rating. I did actually write down an eight, but I've changed my mind. I've put a seven and a half. I think uh, Jack made a great mm -hmm. point earlier about um, Fulham cutting through us in, in, in especially in the first half. I think we look much better in the second half. But I think in the first half, you know, obviously they've gone into the changing room and now 
that's the thing. Gary O'Neill's in-game management, as we know, is very, very good. And he could see what we could see clearly. And he made, you know, some tactical changes at half time and obviously prevented that. And we looked a much better side in the second half. So I'm going for a seven and a half. Man of the match, once again, uh, Lucy's quite right. There were several players that, that, that we could have picked. Um, one player that, that continues to stand out for me and considering... He had a falling out with Lopetegui because surely it, it, it wasn't about the guy's ability, but it was more with, you know, a, a clash of personalities or he's Ryan out Nori. And that player can play anywhere on that pitch. He could yeah. play anywhere. He could play centre half, centre forward, left back, right back. He is one of the most naturally skillful players I've ever seen at Molyneux. And I, and I mean that. He, he's Jason, Jason, on that, do you think he's an option to play in the front three next week? Absolutely. He's, absolutely. Yeah. If you look at the goals, if you, look at the goals well. if you look at the goals that he gets from a, a, a full back, wing back, whatever that, you know, whatever you want to call it, position, uh, he's, he's a dangerous player moving forward. So I would love to see him in a front three. And, you know, he, <laughs> Whether you could put you go Bueno behind him against Coventry, surely. Listen, yeah. ain't Nori, and, he, and he's crossing into the box, he's passing, his movement, everything about him is unbelievable. I mean, look at that skill yesterday when he when he he, he, he did that uh, like two touch with his feet around that player like he wasn't there. Just incredible. And you know what? That's natural raw ability. You can't coach a player that. You can't train any player that. That's just raw ability. So for me. Uh, Ryan out Nori. Moment of the match, and I, and I mentioned how good the fans were. Uh, I think for me, Gary O'Neill's fist pump, the South Bank, then the North Bank, and it's almost given us something to look forward to. We want to get three points, we want to see that. We're all waiting for it. So, um, I'm, I'm delighted that he's getting a, a, another contract and, and he deserves it thoroughly. And we will have a problem with Gary O'Neill soon because there he's going to be club sniffing round. That's and I'll tell you what, Jason, I think they need to give another contract to increase to uh, to Matt Hobbs as well because there's a, a lot of teams Absolutely. have been looking for a really good sporting director and uh, he's certainly proven the point. And I mean, we've had a lot of undersellers and stuff like that, but Matt 100%. Hobbs has done a really good job. So we got to. I believe he's bought a house in the area, though, Dave, and he's been spending some money on it, so that's actually a good sign that he's, he's going to stay in the area. What I will say is, the past couple of seasons, all we bleat on about, or the, the, the fan base, is there's no communication from the club. Get Johnny Phillips doing that episode he was doing and all that, which was great. Now, all of a sudden, nobody cares about the communication from the club because they can see on the pitch, you know, evidently, they are communicating better, but people aren't bothered about that anymore because everything what happens on that pitch day dictates what goes on off it absolutely well said yeah. absolutely well said and it's good to see as well um joss woodbury who's a, another one of our members and is a regular punted he said he's holding his hands up he wanted ran gone last summer i take it back uh there's another one that chris and i don't know sooty you know um you're on about lopetegui and everything like that you know i will I, you know, I'm, I'm of the view with with Lopetegui, he, you know, we would have gone down. If we'd have got Beal, yeah. we'd have been gone. <laughs> you know, we, Don't we, even go there. <laughs> we would have been gone without a doubt. But I don't think Lopetegui had the dressing room. I think he bombed players out. And Ryan Aitnuri, uh is a typical example about that. And he's, he's like a lot of us, if he'd have gone, I mean, he's a he's a like a forty fifty million pound player. Right, Ryan ain't new, Ray. We he could have gone for fifteen million. Uh, it would have been a massive mistake. And you know, as much as Lopetegui kept us up, I, I can't forgive him for what he did during the during the during the summer. It's it's gone. Caused division. Didn't need to do it. Could have kept his mouth shut and gone for whatever reason. Um, and he bombed us certain players out. And then I also think. You know, this is it's a bit like bullseye. This is what you could have won. He must feel an absolute idiot for taking it for, for pushing this team and we're not good enough and thinking he was too good for our team. And for me, and I respect everyone's opinion, I I've, I lost respect for him. Yeah. When he did that because think, no one's think, too big no no one's too big for our team. Absolutely. And it's, I think it's, it's, and it's interesting. Team, it? It's interesting that no one has really come in from apart from Crystal Palace and he, you know, he wants a bigger club. So he's still sat going down the gym in his Wolves gear, you know, thinking, 
you know, this could have been him. All the adoration that Gary O'Neill's getting. And I don't, to be honest, I don't think he'd have done as good as Gary O'Neill either. I think no. he's doing better. Anyway, um, your highlight of the day, did you say? Have you mentioned that? Me? Yes. <laughs> Gary, Gary O'Neill fist pump? The fist pump, yeah. Absolutely. And do you know what? The good thing about Gary O'Neill is he's embracing that fist pump because he didn't want to do it. And now yeah. he's doing it. So... Which is great. And he, he so, deserves all the plaudits, all the adulation yeah. gets because he has worked clearly yeah. so hard living, breathing, sleeping this football club. And uh, what a difference it makes. Neil White says Lopetegui will go to Liverpool or United. They will not touch him. I guarantee you he won't go nope. there because he's got. I'll tell you the reason why because you can't trust this guy. You can't trust nope. him not to go behind your back. And, nope. um, you know, anyway. Sutty, on to uh, your highlight of the day, man of the match and performance rating. Uh, it was one of them games yesterday. Well, I'll do the performance rating first, and that will give you an indication. First off, we should have been two down, Dave. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to give it a six. Harry Wilson missed a real good one on one, didn't he? And that uh, the guy hit the bar from just outside the six yard box. I'd have put that away blindfolded. So we were lucky. <laughs> Um, but second half, Dave, we've obviously gone in. Obviously, Neto's gone gone off. He's rejigged it. Um, and it was an 8.5, so I'll give it a 7.5 overall. Um, yeah. But that second half, you had every player, I've said this to you before, nobody was below a seven in that second half. No one. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so, my... Uh, man of the match, and I'll give a quick shout out. Lamina Gomez, absolute machines, both of them again. Santi Bueno, he just looks a class defender. Um, yeah. These are all 8.5s for me, Dave. Saar kept us in the game first half, Dave, pulled off some good saves. Um, but my man of the match is Ryan Aitnori, and I'm giving him a nine. And I I'll tell you for why, Dave. Um, Pedro Neto went off because I believe Pedro Neto is made of paper thin glass. Mm -hmm. And he's a player that relies 80% on pace. Now, when they rely so much on pace, they're always going to be out for so many games a season. Mm -hmm. it, that A sprinter doesn't run a race every other day, Dave, does yeah. he? Let's in the Olympics and you know you're asking these lads to run flat out for 10 kilometers well they're going to break down so but the reason I wasn't too concerned about it I looked at my brother and I said that's all right I said because uh Ryan ain't Nori will play up there don't you worry about that because you he were nodding when I said out. that earlier didn't I and you're like yeah Santi with Hugo Bueno behind him yeah Hugo Bueno Doc even you know yeah yeah Doc, did, Doc did well there. yesterday yeah. He did a job there, but they he I said this to you yesterday after the game. Ryan ain't nori has got so many tricks up his sleeve, the opposition ain't got a clue what to do because he floats mm. everywhere. And I'll tell you for why, because I don't even think he knows what he's gonna do Dave, <laughs> that quick that, in his head, which translates <laughs> to his feet. That there's times I think, how on earth has he just done that? <laughs> and before you know it, he's taken three players out of the game and he's gone because he's got to he's turn so the still. Well, he saw it right? in the middle of the park and he was he he, he won the, he tackled the ball, did a one two with his foot, went past another one, and then they brought him down, didn't they? For well, a you're foul. Gonna get booked. You, you're gonna get booked, basically. I mean, look that uh, Fulham were lucky to have uh, eleven on the pitch yesterday because they should have <laughs> yeah. had at least one sent off. Yeah. Um and Paulina should have gone off as well, and he come on as a sub. So yeah. uh, they were just hacking away at him for fun. So he's my man of the match. Moment of day. Well, moment of day is nothing in particular, but just I, I know what Gary O'Neill means when he said that's the best result he's had all season. Um, uh, with injuries and setbacks and... And we're still, are we eighth, are we? Ninth, eighth? eighth? I can't remember. We've gone down to ninth today because Brighton beat um Ooh, get him out of our club. Yeah. So we're, we're ninth. Uh, yesterday, I seen something yesterday and I thought every single player on here 
is singing off the same hymn sheet and they um they they actually love this man and when you've got a boss who will have your back and uh look out for you because he knows you're doing your all whether you win or lose um i think you can do special things dave i love it absolutely love it thanks mate um i just want to say um Thank you to uh, Just Matt for your super chat. That's much appreciated. He says, hey, Dave, can you say hello to my dad? Michael Rich, he loves watching your videos. So, everyone, all right, all right uh, Matt's dad, Michael Rich, mm -hmm. thanks for supporting. And what's going on there? I've got fireworks going off. It's like a magical. Uh, but thanks for that, mate. I'm much appreciated. Just to let you know as well, we now got currently watching live 527 of you which is amazing wow. uh, watching live and of course thousands more will watch it back and listen to it on the podcast thank you very much i know we've had quite a few new subscribers tonight which means you can join in the chat uh, we're currently on 32920 so we're only 80 short of 33000 subscribers here on the channel so uh, if you amazing. if you're watching and you're new Hit that, hit that uh, subscribe button. And Carl just said we've just gone over 102 likes on uh, the show so far. Right, Jack, over to you. It's your turn now. Yeah, uh, I just want to make a really quick point that will back up what Sooty's just said. I, I think I read today, since Neto signed for us, he's missed 90 games through injury. That That's two and a half seasons, effectively, isn't 90 it? 90 games? 90 games. I'm sure I read it. It's, it's 90 games. Correct. Sounds about right, yeah. So, wow, in five you know, years. Wow. So, yeah, so we're talking that's about... that's affecting his value massively. Yeah, I was just about to say, yeah, we're talking about big teams coming in with big offers. I, I think they'll be very, very cautious yeah, they before will. they but start spending 60, record. 70 million on him. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, going on to yesterday, uh, performance rating, I said eight. Um, I thought, again, Fulham were just really good first half. We had to stick in, we had to guts it out and Sar kept us in it. But then second half, couple of tactical tweaks, bit of belief from the crowd. And I thought we dominated the second half and, and probably should have got a couple more goals towards the end, um, which would have made it even more, sort of more um, enjoyable scoreline. Uh, man of the match was an easy one for me. I went with Mario Lamina. I, yeah, I just I thought he, he was he was absolutely superb. And, and he made the different second half by pushing up onto their defence and just stopping them playing out and getting blocking that ball into the midfield and then all of a sudden they couldn't play out and we we're getting the ball in their territory a lot easier and that's where we got the free kick for the first goal and obviously the build-up play for the second goal started with Gomez on that side as well Lamina had pushed them to force it wide and we came inside and scored the goal so Lamina got the man of the match for me just I thought he was again he just epitomizes this team for me and I, I say it over and over again when I'm on here but everything that's good about Wolverhampton Wonders at the minute you see it in Mario Lamina that, that mm. guts, heart, desire, passion. But he's a bloody good footballer as well. Yeah. He really, really is. Um, moment of the day, I think similar to what so he's just said, just those three points. Because yeah. it's an easy game there where you've had injuries and you've got one eye on the cup game next week and Fulham in good form. It would have been easy just to turn and go, it's one of them days when it weren't meant to be today. But actually the players and, and I think particularly, again, going back to Sarabi, there was a moment where he almost got the crowd and went with his teammates. And you're thinking, this is a guy who's played for Real Madrid and PSG and Spain. And he's now here doing absolutely everything for Wolverhampton Wanderers. And, and that's kind of what we're saying, isn't it? There's just a, such a togetherness and belief within this group that they just don't know what's, you know, impossible. There's no such, is there? There's no barrier or anything you can put in front of them. And they go, oh, that's too much today. You know, we lose two players to injury. That's, so, you know, we're playing a good team. Doesn't matter, we'll win. We'll find a Don't way to win as well. Fulham had just come off the back of beating United. Um, and they Brighton, scored, yeah. they yeah. beat Brighton 3 0. Yeah, yeah. And you know, an inter interesting stat Fulham have played Wolves in 45 league campaigns and they've never done the double over us, and they still ain't. Would you believe they've never done the double over us? There you go. I don't yeah. think they've beaten us since at, at Molyneux since the seventies or something daft like that. It's such a long time. So yeah, it was uh, it, it was kind of like we we ground out a result, yeah. and I think most of us at half time would would have think if we come out of this with a point, happy days. 
Yeah. Yeah, but but I, I don't think the team thought that. I thought they still thought we can win this game. And, and I think and that's you know, what that's what we're saying. And yeah. and you know what? This is this is the key thing. It's that mentality when the chips are down. We've seen it away at Brentford in the cup, ten men, nine minutes, one nil down, found a way to win. You know, we've seen it so many times that they've got this belief and teamwork and fight that they fight and i'll tell you what the thing is with with us fans if we can see a team that fights for us and fights for the shirt and fights for the badge and gives everything you can forgive everything whereas mm -hmm. like we've had teams in the past where we thought oh they've just given up this team this team doesn't give it up jason you're nodding there you, you, you concur with that Oh, absolutely, yeah. And I've said before, you know, under Large, we seemed to, to lose that, didn't we? And it was a massive, massive anti-climax. Everything was about that era for me. Um, but, listen, Gary O'Neill has brought so much belief. And, you know, there's probably players last season that weren't really jumping off the page, which now are. And once again, like Sarabia, what a player he is. You know, I haven't even sort of mentioned him today i mean what a player he is and you know i didn't even mention him at all when i was speaking unbelievable player and you know when you hear the stats and i didn't know those stats that jack was saying earlier about the goals when he's on the pitch well that just speaks for itself and that's no coincidence by the way you know that is because he's a top class performer he is right then we've covered off uh fulham it is time to look ahead to FA Cup and guys I'm just going to give you and just say I have got the picture of Sutty uh reconfigured have to have it in PDF so I will, you've got that to look forward to so don't log off because it's a cracking picture has he got uh, and he has, and, hey, you what sorry has he got long hair Dave <laughs> no, mate, he's, uh, he's, he's looking at me. A, that's a long me. You'll time. See, uh, you'll, <laughs> yeah. You'll see soon that, enough. That was in black and white, wasn't he, Sutty? <laughs> and um, I'm just going to give you a taste of something to come because we ain't got a quiz tonight. Uh, so we have not got a quiz tonight. But the, the, the question tonight for each of our fans on here, and all you guys can have a think about it this well, I'm asking you, if you were to hold a dinner party at your house, and you could invite three people, four people. You've got to have a Wolves player from the current, current squad, a Wolves player, a Wolves legend, and someone famous or a cartoon character or whatever it is that's a Well, cartoon characters aren't alive today, are they? But someone who's alive today and someone who's died, in, who's passed away in the past, so you've got to have a Wolves legend, a current Wolves squad member, um, a celebrity or someone to live today or a celebrity that, or a famous figure that's passed as your dinner guest. You've got that to think about for when that comes up uh, towards the end. So I'm giving you time to think about that. Lucy, Coventry, quarterfinal of the FA Cup. Five years ago, we got to a semi-final at Wembley. We got within yeah. 11, we got within 60 seconds of the final. Are we going all the way? Are we going to be? How are you feeling about next week's quarter final at home to Coventry? Four, oh, four, four thousand eight hundred Coventry fans sold out. They're going to be up for it. Wolves are sold out, apart from a few, a few, a few little bits. You must be buzzing. Absolutely, I can't wait. I can't wait to get that place rocking because I know we are going to lift the roof next week to get behind them boys. We want to get back to Wembley. We want to do it again. But we're going to we're going to do it. We are. There's, there's no... I'm, I'm nervous because, obviously, it's a cup run. They're going to be up for it as much as we are. Of course, they are. They're doing fantastic in the league. So are we. So are we. So why can't we go all the way? Why can't we beat them? Why can't we win? Why can't we... Oh, I can't wait. And what, is your, what is your score prediction for next week, Lucy? 1-0. 1-0 to the Wanderers. I'll be happy with a 1-0. Leave it to a 1-0. No injuries, thank you very much. Don't go stupid. Just a nice 1-0. i would be happy with that. And guys, leave your score predictions for next week in the comments section as well. So, Lucy's going for a 1-0. 
Jason, yeah. it ain't going to be a given against Coventry next week. It's like it's going to be massive for them. Their fans yeah. are going to be loud and proud. It's a Midlands derby. They're going to be coming up the M6. Yeah. You know, we know that the Wolves, um, you know, are going to be in the atmosphere, judging even even at the weekend. I, I, I thought the fans have been magnificent and, and sooty mentioned this in the fan reaction against Brighton when they were tiring with Molyneux was so low, 23,000. The start of the second half when we knew the backs were against the wall, the fans were loud and then we got the goal after. Molyneux at Man United FA Cup quarter-final. It was an unbelievable night. It's There's so much at stake. Yeah, Are we going to do this, mate, despite everything? Yeah, of course. I think you know. Of course, I think we are. Well, yeah, we are. We are. Of course, we are. But listen, you know, it's it's a one game shootout for them, isn't it? You know, they they're, they're going to come fearless and they're going to be told to to be fearless, aren't they? Uh, and they're a good side, Dave. They are. Let's be honest. And it was close last season, and obviously coming up, and the the you know they're up there this season, so they are a good team. It, but it's just because we've been drawn against the lowest placed side still in the competition. It, automatically gives you and yeah of course we want to be you know playing effectively what are, what are underdogs but it's going to be a really tough game however if these players cannot I, I, look look how fired up there was yesterday look at the performance they're putting yesterday if these players are not fired up for this game against Coventry well then they're never going to be fired up for anything in their life we've got a, a, a ticket here almost to a semi-final the problem is you look over and you know I've, I've said this before Wolves aren't great in semi-finals. I think we're jumping ahead of ourselves by even talking about that at this stage. But we haven't been great in semi-finals. You know, you go back to the 80s in the 90s. We against but we have been great. In, we, we, but we have been, when we've got to the semi-final, we've been great in finals. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, Dave, it, it's that's going to be the, 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 the tough one. But, look, we've got to beat Coventry first. And I, I shouldn't really be saying that because it's a bit disrespectful to Coventry. It's going to be a really tough game. It, but... No, we, we, we can't be disrespectful Coventry because it's no. not a given. And if we go it, out, it, if every it, single it. fan goes out there thinking it's a given, if the players go out there thinking it's a given, we're going no. to get done. Well, I think, I think, I it's, think it's, more likely, it's more likely going to be coming from the supporters that they're fairly to given, not from the players, definitely. Gary O'Neill won't be going into that match saying, right lads, let's get these out of the way. In fact, he ain't going to be saying that. He's going to treat this like it's the huge game that it is Coventry are going to be well up for it. Do I think we've got enough firepower to do it? Yes. If, we, if we're on form and we're on song, we'll win. Sutty. Uh, I know you want to, what you want to say, but you're going to say something completely different, aren't you, to what you really mean? <laughs> Look, I think a lot of things here, Dave. Um, they're bringing 4,800. They're not going to shut up all game, Dave. It's mm. going to be loud. Noisy, we're a scalp for them at the end of the day, Dave. They have nothing at all to lose. They might as well come and have a right good go at us, and they uh, will, and, and they will, yeah. And they might as well put us on the back foot straight from the off. Um, on paper, they shouldn't live with Wolverhampton Wanderers, but football's not played on paper, is it? it's played on grass, and anything can happen. Um, so I don't think it's going to be as easy as we think, and I think that um, 27,000 wolf supporters, all sides of the ground, and I beg even the Billy Wright to start singing. Billy Wright ain't been too bad so far, they've been, they've been, I mean, the Billy Wright, what are you going to ask Get together, they have got better, get together. And drown them out. We must drown them out because yeah. it's not. It really is a vile place to go for an away side if we're noisy and if we can reproduce the Man United atmosphere. I think we'll oh. be going semi-final. I don't want to yeah. predict score, Dave, because you know my score predictions. They are shite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just going to say. If we perform in the stands, we will win. And you know what? Yeah. We're going to do it. The fans yeah. are going to be on point for this game. Jack, final thoughts on Coventry for you before we get to the dinner guests? I, th I think it's all, all been said, hasn't it? I think 
it, it it's in our hands really if we're professional if we're switched on if we're focused it's, it's all the talent takes care of itself in a way doesn't it if you, if you can match them for desire and commitment then your talent will shine through and you'll win that game that's what happened when we went to the Hawthorns, isn't it you know yeah. it was a scrappy nasty game but we matched them for all that stuff and then we had the quality to beat them and i think it will be similar next saturday they'll they'll come and make it difficult and and you know mark robbins is a very very good coach and he'll have something up his sleeve to try and stop us and it's up to us to make sure that we're on it and if we are then we've got to believe in ourselves that, that we can win the game but it's the fa cup and if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen but you've got to have that belief that that we are a better side than coventry and you've just got to go out and show it on saturday Absolutely, mate. And let's hope we do. And like you know, there's going to be a big build-up. Um, it's FA Cup weekend. The focus is going to certainly turn onto the FA Cup. Obviously, there is league stuff going on around it, but like it's going to be on the FA Cup. We're the first one to go as well. So um, yeah, let's hope we get be the first one to get our name in the hat. That would be absolutely fantastic. But like every single fan, you know, if you're watching this, whatever, it's not a given. We have got to do our bit in the stands. We've got to go there with belief, um, but we ain't got to go and underestimate Coventry because we, we've been stung so many times and we cannot fail. We haven't. We have not gone through Brentford, the Baggies beating our bogey team Brighton and hanging on like we were at the end to fall against Coventry, even with the injuries. We've got to make sure that we do our job and then the players will do their job. Right then. Uh, a bit of fun at the end, and we've still got the. Uh, we have still got. When we get round to Sutty, we will put the uh, the picture up. So if you've waited for that picture, <laughs> um, it's coming. But your dinner guests for a Wolves from a Wolves squad member from this uh, from the current squad, Lucy, are you going to go with? Cunha. Why Cunha? I, I think the conversation with Cunha would just be fun just be so much fun he just looks like he's up for the crack he's i'd love to go for a drink with him i think i think he's just class I he love tommy doyle because tommy doyle seems like a genuinely lovely lad mm. yeah I be quite quite really you, go, fair, you, but... you can't have two so you've gone with Cun. No. you've gone with Cun, yeah. Yeah. who's your yeah. wolves legend oh um billy wright billy wright Billy Wright, I'm sure he's got some stories to tell and I'd love to hear them. Billy and uh, Cunha, uh, yeah. Billy and Cunha, I love that. Um, yeah. Celebrity or famous person alive today? Uh, oh. Simon Kell, because I've met him before and he's a genuinely lovely man. Really, hey, I, really you, lovely. Did, uh, you did Pop Idol back in the day, didn't you? No. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Bloody hell, they'd have turned it off. Uh, <laughs> definitely not. Uh, no, but genuinely, really, really nice chap. You'd think he'd be right snotty and not, not want to talk to you. Lovely, lovely man. Lovely the only man. problem is, though, Lucy, he's got that much plastic in his face now. Don't see him too near the radio. He wouldn't be able to talk. <laughs> Very true. Very and, true. Um, famous person... To, or celebrity who's passed away can be a, 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 it could be a, anyone just a fact uh, someone for, uh, who's passed away that you would have joined at the table as well to so join Kuna, Billy Wright, and Simon Cowell at your table. George Michael. George Michael. Why George Michael? I, yeah. Just, again, another lovely, lovely man with a lot of stories to tell. Um, there's such a charitable man as well. Very. And I'm all for people that would, you know, support charities. And, and he was just you, a lovely man. Yeah. What would you do for, do for dinner? Jacket taters. Nice and easy. Thought more. <laughs> a jacket tape. So you're doing a jacket tape with Billy Wright, Matthias Kuna, yep. George Michael, and um, oh, who was the other one that you said? That was it, wasn't it? Couldn't you? No. And... Simon Cow. Simon, Simon Cow. Cow that that yeah, would be a great, a, a great Bring dinner. Bring them down to earth a bit. <laughs> that jacket tight. I love it. Jason. <sighs> right, uh, so. What member from this year? 
Uh, from this year, I think he'd be really fun. I think he'd uh, have plenty of laughs. And when you've seen all the videos behind the scenes at Walls when they interview the players, Jose Sar, I think. Uh, 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 and, and listen, goalkeepers are crazy, aren't they? Generally, so yeah, Jose Sar at the current crop. Love it. Uh, Walls legend. Wolves legend. So, as you know, Dave, I do speak to quite a few doing the Wolf Whistle, and there's one who I've wrote to him. I've sent him both copies of the book. I've got other former players to speak to him, and they have spoke to him, and he hasn't done any official interviews with any journalists, Peter Knowles. And, you know, obviously, oh. yeah, I'd want to find out, you know, some of the questions that, that, that he'll take to his grave now. But, yeah, Peter Knowles. That's a great one. Um Okay, famous character. Could... Celebrity alive, I would go for Robert De Niro. I do love his films, especially the Italian gangster type ones, not so much the Meet the Fockers. And I didn't swear, by the way, that's a, that's a <laughs> film. That that's before. a film, yeah. Yeah so, yeah, so I do like his films. So I'm sure he'd have some absolutely brilliant stories to tell. So Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro, absolutely fantastic. Famous character um, who's passed away. The famous celeb uh, that is dead. So I'm going to have Jose Sar, Peter and Alden, Robert De Niro, which so he, the conversation is going to be going anywhere. So I think we need a bit of background music. And I love his music. He's passed on unbelievable artist, David Bowie. David Bowie, that, that would nice. be a great. And what would you cook for him or you dish him up? Oh, flipping heck. Oh, what would I cook for him? Uh, what would I cook for them, Dave? Uh, I would cook. I'd do. Um, I'd do a nice steak. I'd do mashed potato and peppercorn sauce and a bit of broccoli. Fantastic! Absolutely fantastic! You didn't look too impressed with my choice of food, Dave. I think it's nice. Yes, I think it's all right. I've just got. I've just got <laughs> sensation just uh, in the background. Oh, well, I... Right, we're going on to uh, we're going on to Sooty now. Now, before we go on to Sooty, you've all waited long enough for this photo. Sooty, just build it up. This is the photo of you when and where wearing this top. Qatar World Cup against France quarterfinals in the middle of the desert, Dave. And if I tell you now that if you can imagine the coldest you've ever been at a football match. I can guarantee you that Qatar was cold on a night time. Really? Every single uh, stadium, you had your own air conditioning unit under your seat and the one directly behind you was blowing in the back of your neck and it was freezing. First game I went to, I just had shorts and a T-shirt on, Dave. I came out blue. <laughs> The second one, <laughs> I was putting coats, jeans, everything on, and people were looking at me as if I'd gone absolutely crazy, and I was laughing at them because I knew what was coming, Dave. <laughs> it was freezing. When I say freezing, I am not exaggerating. I was Baltic cold. Well, here so this is... one, I can't remember the name of the stadium now, but it was the one that was in the middle of the desert, and it was a tent shaped like a tent and that picture there i was stood directly above a west brom flag so i've cut it off dave i'd have been absolutely slaughtered for if i'd have left the whole picture on did you tread on it I did, yeah. <laughs> you did <laughs> well we promised you the picture and that is actually Brilliant. if you're listening to it on the podcast so get a chance to watch it back um, we're just on one Brilliant. hour, 28 minutes. It is the same top he's got on tonight as well, if you have a look. There we go. Right then, so your dinner guests. Uh, another one that always looks good fun on all the sort of little um, videos Wolves put out is Mario Lamina. Yeah. He's always yeah. joking. Right? He loves to be in front of a camera to me. He plays up to a camera, doesn't he? Um, yeah. My past um wolves player has to be the king king john richards i've been lucky enough to meet john and he's a very intelligent man mm. um if you think about it over the years he's kept himself out of the limelight he's never really gone back to the game as such although he, he was on the board for a, a short while 
but he's a really, really nice man, John Richards, and my all-time Wolves footballing hero. Love it. Um, I've got another one. It was obviously he's passed away, but I reckon he'd be good value for money, and that's George Best. Yeah, mm. I think George Best could tell us a few stories, Dave. Um, absolutely. Quite... This is this is this is a great dinner guests set, setting. Yeah, and um, the the last one on it is uh, my old man. Oh, I love that, mate. Yeah. And it would be uh, fish and chips delivered because I ain't cooking for no one with that lot in the room. <laughs> I'm not wasting any time. I'm having a good natter. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, and finally, Jack, uh, to you, your yeah. uh, Wolves squad member from uh, this season that you'd have it round for lunch and for your dinner. I'm going to go with Matt Doherty because I've met him a few times and he's a really good lad. Got a very dry sense of humour. Very laid back, but yeah, he'd be good. He's good company, so I'm gonna go with Matt for that one. Love it. <clears throat> uh, Wolf Legend again, someone I've met a couple of times, and again, really nice guy. And and when we use the word legend, this guy is a legend, and that's Kenny Hibbert. Love it. Yeah, absolutely Kenny legend. Hibbert. Yeah, yeah. Famous character currently alive. Uh, Tom Hanks. Tom what Hanks. An actor. Love yeah. every single film he's Love done. It. I think. And Love again, it. he'd have some stories to tell, wouldn't he? I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then uh, someone who's passed away, going back to football for a little bit, someone who is probably my favourite, say, character, favourite personality ever from football is Brian Clough. Brian so Clough. So I'll go with Brian Clough. I love that. And what are you having around for dinner? What What's going to be on the on the uh, the menu? I think we're going to order a Chinese. A Chinese? <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. Chinese. Yeah. And guys... Um, Absolutely uh, fantastic show. I'm wearing this top tonight. This is Wembley 1974 because we had some Wembley heroes that were on the pitch at half time at the weekend. Um, they lift the League Cup. They're not the last major trophy that we won. Of course, we'd won it again in 1980. Wolves do have a thing about winning things with the number four and the number zero on the end. And it is the number four this, this year, isn't it? 2024. It would be absolutely wonderful if we had more Wembley heroes. It would. Wouldn't it be just? Oh, God. Dave. The end Ooh. of May. Dave. Yeah. Before you sign off, uh, can I just quickly uh, ask if I can just have a couple of minutes? And I, I feel terrible because I forgot to mention this bloke last week. He, yeah. um, he sent me a friend request on Facebook. And I'll be honest, I've, ne I've never met him before, but he said, I've been watching you on this channel so i said okay no problem and i got chatting to him all week really nice bloke lives over east anglia way uh, mark um i'm really sorry i forgot to mention last week i didn't realize the poignance of of of, of this week and i know it's been such a tough week for you after looking at posts on facebook mate so just to let you know i've been thinking about you all, all week mate and um keep your head up I'm not going to say why on here, but it has been such a tough week for this bloke due to the loss of somebody a few years ago. So keep your head up, mate, and keep being strong. Fantastic. I appreciate that, Sutty. And finally, Jason, you've had a, you and a, a, a friend have raised a fair bit of money for um, the garden. For <coughs> yeah. You've had a tattoo. Yeah, so, yeah, well, uh, New Cross Day, Royal Wolverhampton Trust, uh, NHS. I've, 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 Olivia spent a lot of time in hospital, as a lot of the watchers and listeners know. Bless her, she's got a, a rare genetic condition. And when you go to the hospital, Dave, there's nothing more important than outside space. The kids are looking at doctors in white coats, they're looking at white walls, they're looking at blue gowns. And when you take them out, even for five minutes, ten minutes, and even the families going out there, you know, if they've had bad news or they just need some fresh air and some headspace, the garden at the minute is dilapidated. It's not a nice place to be, especially if you're a poorly child and, you know, you, you want to pop out. So it, it ain't good. So the new garden's going to cost around 30,000 quid. We've already raised £10,000, and we did that by Neil Razor Ruddock uh, saying that he'd have a wall statue. It was his idea. 
So we got to £8,000 in 48 hours, which blew my mind because of all the fundraising I've done, I've ne it's never, ever, ever gone like that. Uh, £8,000 in 48 hours, so I had to have a Millwall tattoo. A Millwall tattoo. You had a Millwall tattoo. So I've got a tattoo saying, can't see it here, the wall. <laughs> I love so it. So there you go. I've got my Millwall tattoo. And how can people uh, donate if they want to donate to the garden? Well, if they go into my Twitter page, uh, Walls Premier, it's it's uh, it's right at the top. It's my pin tweet. It's uh, justgiving.com forward slash Razor Kids Garden. It's the typing Razor or, you know, uh, go, just go on Twitter. You'll find it there. I'll, I'll send you a link, Dave, that you can put in uh, the, the bio, etc. But we, we've raised 10,000. We need to raise 30. We've got lots more lined up. I've got a dinner with Kenny Jacket on the 23rd of May, which is sold out. That's sold out really quickly. And I'm doing a just a, a Q and A with Dave Jones this Thursday coming. Wensfield Conservative Club, just a fiver in, and we're raising money once again for the for the children's garden. Fantastic work as always, Jason. And thank uh, you, thank you. You did such a great job. Great to be able to highlight some of the work that you uh, you do, guys. Uh, it's an hour and a half, ninety minutes. We're just into added time. We've had, we've still got over five hundred of you watching live, which is phenomenal. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for everyone that's been uh, putting and uh, talking away in the chat. I've managed to get a few of you on the screen as well. Uh, try to read as many of the messages whilst I can, whilst we've been doing. Uh, if you're watching this back on catch up. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and it will be, of course, going out on the Always Wolves podcast, which will be uh, actually, I think it's episode 240 something now uh, that we're on. Um, and Brilliant. Jason, we are well overdue a live podcast, in person podcast soon. So that'll be coming up at some point, hopefully. So uh, it's been a while since we've all managed to get together. Uh, on on that guys thank you ever so much for joining um finally um love to you all if you're a mom happy mother's day if you've got a mom obviously you do happy mother's day if you've lost your mom like i have there she is i love you mom and i miss you happy god bless and happy mother's day to uh to, to those of you that have lost your mom as well because i know what it's like it's tough uh, or have lost someone close um and let's hope that this time next week we're on here looking forward to getting back under that arch to put right the wrongs of five years ago come on gotta keep believing keep dreaming come on let's do this oh, babies. Come from on. all of us to all of you always wolves always wolves, always wolves.